quick rundown. Cargo cults refers to a phenomenon where the modern and the primitive worlds collide, such as a plane landing on a tropical island of which the natives have never seen technology. Seeking to rationalize this experience while integrating their cultural and spiritual beliefs, this is explained as the modern technology or users of it being elevated to the position of godhood, worshipped by the tribe. In some more sinister cases, this idea can be implanted to the tribe by a big man, either a foreign person, chieftain, or villager seeking to use this opportunity to gain power. The most famous case of a cargo cult took place during World War II on the Melanesian Islands. The Japanese, seeking to gain control over the Pacific Ocean, were the first to take advantage of this location as the indigenous peoples observed the world's largest war being fought with the most modern technology. The Japanese station there would distribute goods to the islanders and use their beliefs to attempt to gain compliance before the allied forces arrived. Vast amounts of military equipment and supplies were airdropped or airlifted to the islands before their eyes. This was the first time that they would have seen manufactured clothes, medicine, canned goods and weapons, which were sometimes shared with the Melanesians to their benefit. So radical were these items, and with no way to view their manufacturing, many accepted the idea that they were divine, especially considering that everything came from the skies, or from their point of view, the heavens. With the conclusion of the wars, the military abandoned these air bases and stopped dropping cargo over the islands. With some equipment left behind on the islands, cult leaders would spring up and use what remained and gain favor with the tribes, and promise that if certain rituals were performed, that the gods would return. Islanders would then begin to imitate the actions of the now departed military personnel, such as with military March displays as religious dancers, imitation airstrips to entice the plane gods to land, and even native air controlled towers with fake radio equipment. As the years went on, new tribe members who had never witnessed the events of the war would be told stories of these magical creatures that swallowed people and brought prosperity to the lands. With elders passing down the stories having witnessed it themselves, it is interesting to think for ourselves if any of our own legends or religions were started in a similar way. Today, most of the cargo cults have disbanded as the world has developed, giving the isolated nations the opportunity to travel and develop further. But a handful remain, including one that worships the late Prince Philip after his visit to the island many years ago.